Hello everyone, my name is Akira. I'm a pianist, piano teacher, and a translator who's lived in three different countries. On my channel, I'm posting videos of my performances, topics related to and not related to music. I say this all the time, but I haven't posted anything about not music for a long time, so I decided to do that today. If you haven't done so, please hit subscribe and notification button so you won't miss my future videos. As you may know already, I live in the United States, I teach piano in English, I make English YouTube videos, I'm an English to Japanese translator, I have an English speaking wife, and an English speaking daughter. In fact, I don't really speak Japanese at all, except to speak to my family or friends in Japan. So English is actually my most comfortable language of all. Not to say that I'm a native speaker, but I just feel most comfortable speaking English rather than Japanese or Korean. But I wasn't always like this. In fact, when I first came to the United States, I couldn't even carry on the basic conversation. I still remember today when my friend said, what's up? I used to look up at the ceiling and see what's above me, or wonder if I was having a bad hair day or something. So from that point, how did I become fluent enough in English so that I can teach something very specialized like piano in English? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Before I start, today's sponsor is, as always, my awesome patrons. I'm trying to make these videos more often and grow my channel, but for that I need a lot of support from everyone, especially monetary support. And if you're kind enough to support me for $3 or $10 per month, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page in the description. Alright, let's start! I was 16 when I first lived in the United States as an exchange student. Until then, I grew up in Japan, mainly speaking Japanese. Actually, only speaking in Japanese. From 3rd grade to 6th grade, I was enrolled in children's English conversation class. I think I learned a lot from those classes, but I later met a friend of mine who was in the same class, and she spoke zero English. So the effect of those classes are kind of questionable, but at least it planted a seed of interest in me. In Japan, from 7th grade on, you are required to take English classes at school. I considered English as a life skill rather than school subject, so I was more interested and motivated and then I did study. So my grade card looked like below average except for English and music, just like how I am right now. So when I came to America for the first time as an exchange student, I expected some trouble because I'm gonna be living in English speaking country for the first time, but I wasn't expecting that much trouble. I thought I would be fine carrying normal conversation, maybe I'm gonna have a little trouble at the school. But I was completely wrong. English as a subject is one thing, but actually speaking it and listening to it and carrying on the conversation in real time is another thing. And you can never experience that unless you put yourself in that environment. Like I said in the beginning, I couldn't even understand such an easy thing like what's up. I know what what meant and I knew what up meant. So I looked up. So I seriously thought my friend was warning me that something's gonna fall onto me from above. But everything I learned at Japanese school wasn't totally in vain. Because of that, I had wide vocabulary and I knew basic grammar. So all I had to do was adapt that into real context. But that is easier said than done. It took me about six months living in America to be able to comfortably speak and listen to English. But there are three things that really helped me during that time. One is that I was isolated from Japanese community. In fact, there's no Japanese community in my town. There's no Japanese speaking person in town. And the closest person who spoke Japanese was half an hour away on freeway. And I couldn't drive at the time. When you live in a foreign country, it is our nature to want to speak our own language and hang around with people who have the same ideas. But if you do that, it really, really delays your learning. That's why when people ask me for advice in learning English and coming to America, I say don't go to LA or Hawaii. Because those places, they're a huge Japanese community. And it's almost impossible not to fall into that trap and keep speaking in Japanese when you're living in a foreign country, which totally defeats the purpose of your study abroad. Anyway, not being able to speak to Japanese person at all really helped me because if I needed help, I had to ask in English. If I was sick, I had to be able to tell that in English. If I didn't try to speak English, nobody wanted to play with me. Secondly, I had very good host families. I stayed with two families, and both of them welcomed me very warmly. But especially the second family, my host mother, among with so many good qualities she had, she was very talkative and very fair. 
When she wasn't talking to me, she was talking to other members of the family, or she was talking on the phone, or she was talking to herself. And being able to listen to real English all the time, 24-7, really trained my ears. And she was also fair, meaning she also wanted me to speak as well. And wait until I answer. So I couldn't be just a silent listener, but I had to answer her questions and state my opinions. And she would occasionally correct me. Also being treated fairly in her family was that I was supposed to answer the phones. And that wasn't a time of cell phone at all. Everybody had a home phone. And if you don't answer in a certain amount of time, it'll go to voicemail. So she would ask me to answer the phone. And that was huge responsibility for somebody whose native language is not English. What if I miss something and cause trouble? So I was put in this situation where I really had to listen carefully and ask again if I couldn't understand and be able to write down what the other person was saying. And that was really good training. Oh, by the way, she was actually a very honest person too. So she later told me that she didn't know if I was slow or it was just a language barrier because I couldn't really speak a lot. Because I couldn't explain things very well or I didn't say a lot of things. I hope she doesn't think that way anymore. Thirdly, I had very good friends. Because I couldn't speak very well, I didn't get a lot of friends, but I had a few very close friends. One of them was an exchange student from Italy, and we were in the same class. And I was very comfortable talking to him because he's in the same situation. We would speak slowly to each other and practice English on each other while playing chess and other things. That really gave me an opportunity to try out things. I think we really helped each other out throughout the year. I also had this native speaker friend who would invite me to places and always made fun of me making mistake in English. Making fun of a non-native speaker's mistake sounds like a mean thing, but it was actually very good for me. Because when you're embarrassed, you're gonna automatically learn the correct thing because you don't wanna be embarrassed anymore. And those sweet and bitter experiences are what grew me. So I really appreciate this friend being honest with me. So anyway, I had such a great exchange year and that really laid the foundation for my English speaking. A lot of things happened after that, but from there on, long story short, I was always learning and living speaking in English or Korean at one point. And here I am. And I'm still learning. Just like music and piano, your learning never stops. I'm still learning new words, new expressions, new things about English and American culture, just like I'm learning new things about music. One thing I also remember doing as an English learner, whether I was living in the United States or Japan or Korea, was to talk to myself in the bathroom while you're sitting, of course. What else would you do? We didn't have YouTube and smartphones. So when I was sitting in the bathroom by myself, having nothing to do with my brain or upper body, I used to practice difficult phrases to say, or maybe I would talk to myself and tell myself what I did yesterday, what I'm going to do today, just to practice the language. And sometimes my mom called it and she would walk by and say, Hey, are you talking to yourself? And I'll be like, no, but I definitely was. Anyway, this is the overview of how I learned English. The important thing is to isolate yourself. It's very, very difficult to cut off yourself from your own culture and people, but you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone to achieve something great. And when it comes to language learning, that means getting out of your culture and getting out of your own language and expose yourself to the language you want to learn as much as possible. Another important thing is practice, practice, practice. In this video, I explain how similar language and music are, just like you have to practice, practice, practice piano or whatever instrument you're learning to be fluent in it. In order to be able to fluent in foreign language, you've got to practice, practice, practice. Even if that means you're going to have to be a strange person who speaks to yourself in the bathroom. Or embarrassing yourself in front of your new friends. Alright, that's it for today. I hope this was useful or interesting. And if you like this video, please hit the like button so YouTube will know that this is a good content and start recommending it to other people as well. Do you have any tips to learn a new language? Or any interesting episode about learning new languages? Please leave them in the comment section. If you have any questions about language learning, please leave them in the comment section too. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.